Hey guys, it's your girl Shalana back today with another video. In today's video, we're going to be discussing the emergency allotment and the payout dates. We're also going to talk about some SNAP training programs that are going on, pandemic EBT confusion, the $375 summer pandemic EBT food assistance programs, and more, my darling. So if you want to know what is going on in the lovely world of EBT, you already know what to do. Stay tuned, your girl's got you covered. Now, if this is your first time tuning into my channel, hi, hello, hey, friends. My name is Shalay, and here on this channel, we discuss shopping, saving, and everything in between. I would love to have you a part of my internet family. Super easy. Click the big old red subscribe button down below when you're in, just like that. And while you're at it, go ahead and give me a like because you love me bringing this content to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And guys, if you ever wanted to make a little bit of moolah, grab a copy of my ebook where I teach you how to get this money on YouTube. Or maybe you're starting a business and if you need that, then I know you need some vendors to help get the word out about your business. Grab my ebooks. They're only $14.97. I guarantee a return on investment. And grab some of that Amazon Prime, my darling. Yes, I'm telling you. Go ahead and grab the Amazon Prime for free on your girl. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right into it for the emergency allotment and the payout dates. Alabama, March 1st. Alaska, February 1st through the 28th. Arizona, February 2nd. Colorado, February 6th through the 11th. D.C., your regular scheduled issuance. Georgia, what's up all my Georgia peaches? February 24th through the 28th. Hawaii, March 14th, Illinois, February 20th through the 28th, Indiana, the 5th through the 23rd, odd days only, Iowa, February 1st through the 10th, Kentucky, February 2nd through the 19th, Louisiana, February 5th, 12th, 19th, and 26th, Maine, February 10th, Maryland, February 1st through the 28th, Michigan, February 19th through the 28th, New Jersey, February 1st through the 5th, New Hampshire, February 3rd and the 18th. New Mexico, your regular issuance date for February 1st through the 13th. If you receive your benefits then, you'll get it on February 13th. And then if your date is after the 14th of February, you'll get it on your regular scheduled issuance. I don't know about what's going on with New Mexico, okay? North Carolina, February 22nd through March 2nd. Ohio, February 24th. Oklahoma, February 10th through the 15th, Oregon, February 10th and the 25th, Pennsylvania, February 15th through March 1st, Rhode Island, February 3rd, South Carolina, February 1st through the 19th, Texas, February 2nd through the 8th, Virginia, February 16th, Washington, I still couldn't find the date, West Virginia, February 3rd, Wisconsin, February 12th, and Wyoming, February 2nd through the 5th. Next, we are going to discuss the pandemic EBT. Colorado will pay out benefits from August through December of 2021 in June of 2022. And then for the months of January through May of 2022, they will pay out in August of 2022. Now, Delaware will pay out August and September in February. Benefits for October and November in March. December and January in April, and then February and March in May, and then benefits for April will be paid out in June. Indiana will pay out on a quarterly basis. Louisiana will pay out for the months of August through October of 2021 in February of 2022. From November through January, they will pay out in March of this year. And then from February and March, you'll pay out in April. And then for benefits for April, will get paid out in May. Minnesota will issue benefits on a monthly basis. New Mexico should be paying out at the end of this month. Ohio will issue benefits on a monthly basis. Michigan will issue benefits on a monthly basis. North Carolina will pay out benefits at the end of January and February if necessary. Rhode Island will pay out for children in public schools from September through November each week in February. And then for private schools, they will pay out for on three separate issuance on a weekly basis in March. And then they will issue benefits for December for public schools in early March. And then for those that are in private schools in late March. And then benefits for January will be issued for both public and private in April. And then the rest of the school year, they will pay out on a monthly basis. 
Vermont will issue benefits from September through January in one issuance and then from February through June in another. Virginia will pay out benefits from August through January in a single issuance no later than March of this year and then respectively a monthly basis. And then Wisconsin will issue benefits from August through October in March and then for November and December in April. I still cannot find anything on Florida, guys, and I have been checking. But let's go ahead and roll into our stories because it's about some money, baby. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys, so we're going to kick things off in Vermont. What's up, Vermont, where the house is tentatively going to give a green light to a $1,200 child tax credit. Now, the Vermont House of Representatives have given a preliminary approval, okay? Hasn't been approved, guys, but a $50 million tax cut package that will send $1,200 per child to most families with kids age 6 or under. Now, as of right now, the Vermont bill will benefit about 50,000 children. The benefit starts to phase out for taxpayers making over $200,000 a year, regardless of your filing status. So it doesn't matter if you are married or not, over $200,000, uh, you probably won't get anything, okay? Now, the House Bill 510 is a anti-poverty measure that takes aim at Vermont's demographic woes. They say parents with young children are less likely to have higher incomes and supporters point that the research shows that cash payments to low-income mothers could positively impact the brain development in babies. So they're going to model this tax credit after the federal child tax credit, which Congress right now has um, temporarily expanded for the $3,600 for those six months during the pandemic. So families can still get the other half of the six months, remember when they filed their taxes. So as of right now, it's just a preliminary. It could happen. They're looking at it. I'm just happy that states are even thinking of the child tax credit right now because, you know, we're kind of in limbo. So, hey, maybe more states will jump on board, but hopefully it does get approved. And Vermont, you'll get $1,200 coming your way. Now, speaking of child tax credit, we got some info there as well. Now, the Department of Education says it will not seize your child tax credit refund for past due student loans. So right now, there's about 9 million federal student loan borrowers whose loans are in default. Roughly half of the parents have dependent children who are now eligible for the child tax credit. We all know that the monthly installments for the credit was paid out from July to December. That was the first six months, and it was protected for garnishments from your federal debts. Now that you're about to receive your refund this tax season, the the federal student loan pause will protect those refunds issued before May 1st and after May 1st. So the education department says that they won't seize your child tax credit payments at all, none at all this year at all. So that works out. So if you're expecting a refund, and we all know right now that the Department of Education has student loans paused until May 1st, but even if your refund comes after May 1st, you don't have anything to worry about, okay? So you're going to get your refund one way or another, baby, the cakes. All right, let's move on. Next, we are headed to Massachusetts where they have COVID relief funds available. So guys, low-income workers will be getting some extra money from the state soon. About a half a million of low-income workers will receive a $500 payment from the state next month as part of its $4 billion COVID-19 relief bill signed by Governor Baker in December. Now, the eligibility is based on your 2020 tax returns, but if your income, it must be at least between $12,750 to qualify and not above $38,280 for a single filer. So like a family of four would get a $500 check if their, if their income does not exceed $78,600. Now, Governor Baker said, hey, this money is to help support people mostly in minimum wage positions. He said these $500 payments will automatically be mailed out at the end of March Workers who receive unemployment compensation in 2020, you won't be eligible for the first round of payments, but the second round of checks will be announced by the state at a later date and you will qualify for those. So we got Massachusetts, but next we are headed to New York. What's up, New York? I definitely got some info for you as well. All right, so listen up, New York, right? Listen up, good, because more than $64 million in federal funding will be used to provide one-time payments to struggling New Yorkers for those that have children or are living in multi-generational households, as well as survivors of domestic violence, my seasoned seniors as well. I'm telling you, the getting gets good. Now, the one-time payments are to help the cost of diapers for struggling families, 
food expenses, household expenses, both children and older adults, and provide housing and relocation assistance for survivors of domestic violence. So your governor is doing it that big, like just doing it big, right? So starting this month, they will issue one-time payments to families that are enrolled in public assistance or the SNAP program who have a child under the age of three years old. Now the eligibility for this are as follows. Families will receive $140 per eligible child to assist with the cost of diapers. And they're roughly going to give about 150,000 children this. This is going to go statewide. Now, in April, they're also going to issue a one-time payment of $730 to households that are enrolled in public assistance or SNAP that are both an adult who is 55 or older and a child who is 17 and under. So $140 first for children under the age of three, then $730 for if you are 55 or older and a child who is 17 and under. Now households will get the one-time payments for each eligible older adult in the household. So this is per person. Approximately 26,000 households are expected to receive this. In both instances, they will issue these payments directly to your pandemic EBT cards, okay? So definitely keep those cards as well. I'm gonna keep bringing it to you as well, all right? Now, we're gonna move on because for those that um, need help with like survivors for short-term expenses, relocation, domestic violence survivors, they're going to issue payments to them as well. And as of right now, it doesn't have the amount, but money will be coming to you as well. So New York, you're doing it big. Check your cards. You don't have to do anything. As long as you are on the SNAP program, you good as golden, all right? So yeah, this is what I have, guys. I would have came to you today. I'm finally back at home. Yay, yay, yay. However, I'm looking like buckwheat right now, so... Yeah, your girl got to get her hair done and then we'll be back on this camera and we're going to be rocking and rolling. But the goal is to go live tomorrow after I get this hair appointment, okay? You know, don't talk about your girl, pray for your girl, all right? All right, so yeah. Um, let me know if you have some video ideas that you would like for me to create. As always, you can submit your questions to Actually, and I can help you on an individual basis. Go ahead and pick up a copy of my ebook, grab some of that Amazon Prime for free, and yeah, I will talk to you later, Gator. Bye, guys.